Okay, in this section we're going to talk about graphing and the very first skill that you need to learn is to figure out what kind of graph that you need to make. So there are several types of graphs that we're going to talk about and that scientists will use to display their data. And so there's three kinds that we'll talk about. The first is called a circle graph or a pie chart or you could call it a circle chart some variation of that. that. Um, you've seen these before. They look like a circle, right? And they're going to be used to display different percents. So here's a couple things. Um, the dependent variable uh, is not continuous. So it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, or 2, 4, 6, 8. It usually presents data as part of a whole or percentages. You have bar graphs. It would look something like this. So with a bar graph, your dependent variable again is not continuous. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. And there's no order to the categories on the x-axis. The bars typically don't touch. And the y-axis usually is a frequency, a count of how many times something happens or how many people were polled or something like that. And um, the really important thing here is a bar graph is used when you want to compare data. So that is the big thing that I use to figure out when I want to use a bar graph. A line graph, here's an example. Um, this is not a best fit line, this is just a line graph that's been connected. The dependent variable is continuous. The points are plotted using X and Y components like in math. The points are connected because the observations are not independent of each other. And that's the big difference. You want to see a relationship. Okay, so if it says I want to see a relationship between the two variables, I would use the line graph. What happens with x um, when I change y? Or what happens to y when I change x? Then you use the line graph. So here, uh, which type of graph would you choose based on this data and why? The table shows the favorite toppings on a pizza of students in a high school. So you have pizza topping and number of students. So what do you think? So my answer would be a bar graph. And the reason why is because it's used to compare data. So part, pie charts are two, but we're not dealing with percent. So we could calculate um, a percent and we could do a pie chart. But if we want to use data as is, um, we would do a bar graph. Um, we're not using a line graph here because we're not seeing a relationship between the two variables. We just want to see how many kids like pepperoni, how many like cheese, how many like sausage. Okay, so the second skill that we're going to talk about is labeling axes. So when labeling your axes, keep three things in mind. The first thing is the independent variable is going to be written along the horizontal axis. So remember that the independent variable is the one that you're going to change or manipulate. And also remember that the horizontal axis is the x-axis or the one that's on the bottom. So you're going to put that right here. The dependent variable, the one that is going to be changing or responding, is going to be written around, along the vertical axis or the y-axis. So you're going to put that right here. And then the last thing you need to remember is that the units on any variable should be written in parentheses along the axis tell. And that's the most important thing. Okay, so here's a sample. A farmer wants to know if there is a relationship between the amount of fertilizer in kilograms she uses and how tall her corn grows in centimeters. So the first thing we need to do is pick out which thing is changing. Okay, so the thing that she is changing is the amount of fertilizer, right? So that is going to go on the bottom and we need to make sure we put the units in parentheses right there. Then we can put the other one how tall her corn grows along the side and make sure we put the units again in parentheses. Okay, and then we're done. Just make sure you always include units. 